And we're back. Episode two. <laughs> and we're back with my man, Luke. Again, we are absolutely doomed, cousin, if we got this guy running the show. I don't know what he's doing. He's running back and forth. You talk about a more distracting character than I've ever seen. My man, Luke, who's our producer on Illegal Formation with the Cousins, Rob and Garrett, also known as the G-Money, out of the 305, coming to you for week two, talking football. Again, we make the picks based on the G-Money. What games are we picking? Our Dolphins, Bucks every week, and we pick the primetime games. Prime time usually going to be the Thursdays and the Mondays. We're coming off of an spectacular week one where the Cousins both went four and two. My two losses came from the Ravens. I needed the pinky or the big toe to get in the end zone, and I cover, and I needed the fins. If the fins win, but doesn't cover the spread, keep in mind we do spreads here based on the hard rock bet. G-Money, where'd your losses come from, pal? Uh, also the Dolphins and then uh, the Jets laid a stinker last night at the 49ers. So uh, Niners. I took the Jets the, on that one. So. I took the Niners at home. So I like it. So ultimately two cousins, two lawyers making content because we enjoy it and we love it. We're going to jump right in to week two, turning it over to the professional, the G money. Looks like first game G. Oh, oh. Dolphins this Thursday coming in hot. Our guy from the 305. Who you got, cousin? Yeah, so the Dolphins game happens to be our one of the primetime games this week. I think, uh, you know, nice win by the Dolphins last week to come back in the second half against the Jaguars. Shut them out in the second half. Big play by Tyreek Hill with the 80-yard touchdown. Bills, Dolphins, I know Tua has struggled against the Bills historically, but I just feel that in Miami this early in the season, they're going to work on what they did last week against Jacksonville. I think they're going to carry it over into next week. With the crowd is going to be on their side. Tyreek Hill going to get the support from the crowd. Everyone's going to be behind these players. And while I think this game is going to be a field goal one way or the other, I'll take the Dolphins to win by a field goal and cover the two and a half. Great point with the Cheetah, Tyreek. The other aspect of our show is that we're going to do an overtime segment every week talking about all things legal when it comes to the NFL. Only thing we're going to be talking about on the overtime sh uh, portion of the show is Tariq Hill. What happened with the detainment? We're going to get into that. But getting back to the G money, two and a half at home, Dolphins. We talked about it kind of in our little prep where I was saying that I felt like Miami came out stuttering. G money made a couple good points. He says, hey, show me one team that really does it when you come off of the preseason. Belichick always says, hey, look, you're playing against nobody in the preseason. What do your number ones look like? Good points. I will say Tariq's an animal, 80-yard bomb, but I'm a huge Allen Mark. The kid can spin it. I think this is the one guy that if they get into a shootout, he can do it. Now, does the injury with his hand make a difference? Is he going to be 100%? It's even money. It's two and a half. If it was three, I'm probably taking the bills. I'm going to back the cousin. I'm going Dolphins, mainly on the point you just made. Two aspects. One, they're at home. And two, I think the crowd's going to be going nuts for Tariq. I think it's going to be a big-time primetime game. If they can stay composed, if they can contain Allen, make him turn over the ball, I think the Dolphins walk out of there with a W2-0 for the year. Yeah, and on the short week as well with uh, the Allen injury, you know, hopefully it bounces back. I mean, two great quarterbacks. It's going to be Difference. a wild game, I think, one way or the other. Difference maker for me. Um, if it's not so. the hand, I, I'm conflicted because yeah. I know he gets a lot of shit for interceptions, but the guy's a killer. Yeah. All right, G Money, lead us into our next game. <clears throat> next game, we've got Sunday at 1 o'clock. we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Detroit Lions. The line right now from the Hard Rock is Detroit favored by seven. Uh, Tampa, impressive last week. Not the greatest opponent, but hey, they went out, they did their job, scored a bunch of points, uh, and How about just their attitude. I just don't think they're scared of anybody. I think they can keep it close in the Superdome against Detroit. Well, it's not the Superdome. I don't know what dome, the dome they play in. Ford Field, whatever, whatever it is. Gazillion dollar field. I think the Bucks, uh, like I said, they're not scared. They got the right attitude. I think they can keep it close. I don't know if they're going to come out all the way with a complete upset and win the game, but I think they keep it close. I think they can cover the seven points. Wow. Um, and yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. 
I like it. Uh, you know, the game with Detroit against the Rams also had me a little conflicted. I couldn't tell, you know, if they had the stride. Big crowd at home. Golf looked good. He was making his checkdowns. And the one thing that I thought about when I was watching that game with the Bucks is the Bucks against Washington, their biggest issue, scrambling quarterback. You know, they play that deep cover two, they fly to the ball, but when he scrambled, but I don't think Goff can do that. Goff can't get outside the tackle. He's not going to shake anybody. So I think that plays to the Bucks' favor. Now, Baker went off. I'm a hometown guy. Keep in mind the show. One Tampa guy, one guy from Miami, came out, four TDs, lit it up. I think he should be the MVP of the NFC. But he should also throw him for another touchdown if we don't drop one on that wheel pattern of the wide receiver. I forgot who it was, but he had him lit there too. If they get out, if we run the ball like we do, I agree. I think with the seven, and because I'm a hometown guy, I'm taking the Bucks for the upset, at least covering within the seven. We're going to go on the run. We might get a little preview of what some playoff football could look like, but I'm taking with the cousin. I imagine I'm, I'm going Bucks with the upset. Well, with the spread at least. There you go. All right, G, take us away. Where are we going? So that leads us into what, the uh, afternoon primetime game? Uh, yes, Sunday night football uh, will be Chicago Bears at Houston Texans. Jeez. The Texans right now are favored by six and a half. Uh, going off of just what we've seen so far from Chicago, they got it done with their special teams. I don't know how you win a game without scoring an offensive touchdown, but <laughs> they got it done. Let's go. They're going to need a lot more than that against Houston, though. I think Houston – going back to last year is is hot. They're looking good. I think they're still looking good. Good game last week. They overcame Anthony Robinson just throwing gigantic bomb bombs touchdowns. Everywhere. So And how about their new wide receiver coming over from Diggs, the Bills making Diggs the short nuts. yardage route running. They got Mixon now as a running back and uh, I think everyone's a fan of CJ Stroud's game right now. So, I think Houston Sunday night coming home I think they're going to get it done against the Bears. I think the Bears are going to need some more time to kind of get their offense and everything back online. Wasn't impressed last week. Uh, so, yeah, give me the Texans uh, to win by at least a touchdown and, and cover. And remind me, were the Bears at home for the opener? Yeah, I think it was in Chicago. So yeah. I think if yeah. – which to me makes it even worse. I get it. we got a rookie quarterback, but they played him up, hard knocks, uh, you know, in the preseason. Like this guy, the best quote I saw was, hey, look, he only competed, completed 50% of his passes in the preseason, and those are against two and threes. That's not starters. I think he walks into the Texans. I agree with you. The Texans are playing with some serious attitude. They're coming out busting people in the face. They got Diggs running around. Their quarterback, Stroud, is just absolutely on fire. But your point as to guess what? They can also run the ball. And guess who said that last week? The G unit. When he looked at the Eagles fans and they said, hey, look, watch out for Saquon. What did he do? He threw up three. I think the Texans are very disciplined in terms of they got a passing, they can rush, don't know much about the defense, but on a whole week to prep for that rookie quarterback, I don't think that guy's going to come out and be the man in his first year. I don't see them going in. I think six and a half obviously is a big number, but I don't think they can go in the Texans. I'm taking Texans at home. All right. So look at that. Cousins are matching three for three this year. Uh-oh, yep. or this week. Brings us to our final game, Monday night, Monday night. Dun, football. Dun, 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 dun. Atlanta Falcons at the Philadelphia Eagles. Another big number. Jeez, man, look at this the spread. Eagles are favored by six and a half. Another uh, big number, dude. So, yeah, I mean, looking at Atlanta yesterday, gosh, you just wonder where is their offense going to come from. They're trying to make changes. They got Kirk Cousins now, but what a, a slow start. I know Pittsburgh defense is insane. J.J. Watt is defensive player of the year almost every year, it seems like. Uh, but it seems like Atlanta still kind of think of them like Chicago. They're still trying to figure this thing out. They're get, I think their slow start might continue, especially against a team like the Eagles who – On the road. They're going to be back in Philadelphia from Brazil. The home crowd's going to be ready. They're going to be roll, rocking in the USA when they get back. So really? I like the Eagles uh, big. I think they're going to cover the six and a half. Uh, so I'm taking Philadelphia. From our friends at the Hard Rock Bet – and why the Hard Rock? Again, we got one right here in Tampa, one in Hollywood out of the 305. At six and a half, big numbers. All of our games in week one were like two and a half, three, three and a half. So it made it really kind of funky. I mean, I think that's why you even took Rodgers to say, hey, they're giving him too many points. 
Uh, but I got to agree with you again, cousin. I, I, I can't agree more. Here's the scary part in the NFL. Absolute stinker, laid an egg for the Falcons at home. Can Cousins be that bad again? Probably not. they got to get some things corrected. So can he cover the six and a half? I mean, he's getting six and a half. But what did we see from the Eagles? Saquon ran it down their throat. They can throw. We said that Hurts is a killer. What did he do? He goes all the way to Brazil, and he dominates, man. Oh, yeah, and their receivers are amazing, too. A.J. Brown, uh, Smith. Sick catch. So, you know, I – I just think they got the offensive firepower to, to hold up. To now, the does offense. it concern you that they're making a long trip back, or do they got plenty of time to come off that? No, nah, they this came back last week. I think being at home after being in Brazil is a big advantage for the Eagles. The extra day on Monday. Yeah. You know, they're not even playing on Sunday. Yep, they played last Friday. So That's a clean sweep, folks. I'm going with the G money again. You can't go against a guy who went 4-2 and two and only lost because the home group in Miami doesn't cover by a half a point. I'm going Eagles. As a recap, that's four for four with the Cousins agreeing today. So talk to me, G. We're taking what? Fins? Dolphins, minus two and a half. Bucks, uh, plus seven. Texans, minus six and a half. And Eagles, minus six and a half. Boom. That's why they call it a legal formation. That's what we're doing, bringing content. Let us know if you agree. Hit that button, subscribe or follow. We appreciate all the initial support we got from everybody. Next step, we're going to jump right into our boy Cheetah. We're going to be talking about overtime, illegal formation, impact, talking about do they have the right to detain you? Do they have the right to pull you over? How did that affect him getting pulled out of the car? Things we're going to check the box off on overtime with uh, G Money and Rob.